Today we are going to be fixing a MacBook, like we often do. But today, before we get started, I'm just going to start with the first sponsor that we have ever had, CircuitSpecialist.com. Circuit Specialist sent a CSI 3005P power supply for me to try out to replace the old Circuit Specialist power supply that I had and linked to. Now, one of the things that I've talked about is that I get countless useless trash sponsorship offers on an almost daily basis that I say no to because they're asking me to sponsor crappy data recovery software or garbage equipment or, you know, shit soldering stations or shit digital microscopes. And I say no because it's not something that I use. The thing with Circuit Specialists is that this is actually a product that I have been linking to and I have been linking to this product for the past about three years or so. So if you go over here, this is the power supply that I've been linking to in the description of my videos that I use. It is able to be read from a computer, so if you want to do the kind of streams that I do where you show stuff on stream, you can. It is pretty accurate, and above all, it's just, you know, it hasn't ever broken in the several years that I've been using it, which is more than I could say for a lot of the other bench power supplies. And I've been linking to that for many years, and now they sent me one of these. It's actually been working pretty well. Uh, Paul is going to wind up doing a review on it soon. Anytime there's some sort of sponsored free stuff, I prefer to have Paul do the review because then it's le it, it gets rid of the bias that I could have from getting free stuff that I can sell. And this is, a, I believe, the new version of the power supply that I was using here, the 2116A. This is the CSI 3005. And because I got this new power supply, I can go back to having this on the screen. So since I changed stations, I no longer have access to that power supply. I have this, uh, so I, I didn't have the amperage reading on the screen. But now I can show you amperage readings on the screen again. So thank you very much, Circuit Specialists. I appreciate it. And I'll be updating the link in my description to the new version. As you can see, the old version is actually more costly at this point. It's 150 It used to be maybe like 120 And this new version is $86.36. And it seems like a nice little upgrade. So that being said... We are going to uh, get started fixing a MacBook. Now that I've sold out entirely. Yes, I am a sellout. Lewis is a sellout. Evil, greedy bastard. Lewis got himself a free power supply. Free power supply. And we'll see if this power supply works or if it blows up this MacBook. Because, hey, you never know. This thing could be a piece of shit. You really never know. I like Circuit Specialists. They have a lot of really cool stuff on their website, but I am a skeptical because I have terrible luck with everything. This says it's taking 5 volts at 20 milliamps. Let's see what's going on with this machine. Here we have a MacBook that won't turn on. When I plug in the charger, it takes 5 volts at 20 milliamps. It never reaches 20 volts like it's supposed to reach 20 volts. Like somebody who has 830,000 subscribers on YouTube should have a real studio or proper lighting or a store that's not next to a large window where when the light comes in it completely destroys the visibility of my face but such is life we're gonna open up this little MacBook and see what we can do that other place I was looking to get is a store there's a, another store I was talking about the, the two places that one address a few blocks away never got back to me but screw them we don't need them or their overpriced ass store $6,700 for less than 700 square feet can blow me anyway. They acted like they were doing me a favor by offering me a, like, finally budging to, like, a five- or seven-year lease from a three- to five-year. Thank you so much, landlord. We appreciate so much that I'm only going to have my rent quadrupled after you sell the building in five to seven years rather than... I appreciate it. F New York real estate. Oh, well, let's get the board out of this thing. As you know, oh, getting the board out of this computer is just a... Well, that's so many screws. It's like, you need a T3, a Penelope, a T5. It reminds me of that song. Like, badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom. T3, 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 T
This board appears to be an 820-00281. And 820-00281 boards have a circuit where these little chips, the CD3215s, are going to be speaking to the charger. Those chips have to turn on in order for all of this functionality to work. So let's open up a schematic for the A20-00281. Here we have the chip that's going to speak to the charger. This is a CD3215. It's powered by the voltage coming into it, which is PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. Now, if you take a look on the board, you'll see that where the charge ports are on the side, that there's a data line. And that little data line is going to speak to the CD3215 from the charger. Watch. I'll show you. It's pretty. See this over here? That's one example. From charge port to CD3215. But, remember, in order for this to work, our CD3215 has to be getting power. It has to be turning on. So if we check over here, the voltage in. Here we have V in, as in voltage in, and then we have pp 3 v 3 underscore G3 hot. So if we check for where pp 3 v 3 underscore G3 hot should be showing up, Around here, 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 and we turn on the multimeter, and Paul Daniels' is horrendous software, and we measure, we should get 3.4 volts. And we do get 3.4 volts. So now the question then becomes, why are our CD3215s not speaking to the charger? Much bad. So we're going to look around this board and see if there's anything that gives us an indication as to why those CD3215s are not doing their job and being happy little CD3215s, sending out happy little communication signals to the charger. Okay, let's just turn off Paul Daniels' horrendous software there. So this chip has sticky goo around it. Ew! And a hair! Bigger ew! Gross! Disgusting! Let's see what we have on the other side. Perhaps even a bigger hair. Wow! The hair continues! But this CD3215 looks kind of clean. Now if we go to the other side, we're going to take a look at those CD3215s as well. And see if they're filled with hair and nastiness and grossness. So let's start by reflowing this CD3215 using the proper amount of Amtec Flux. Here we have Amtec NC559V2TF. We are going to reflow this board. Or at least, not the board, but our CD3215 using this beautiful Amtec Flux. The proper amount. The proper soldering job. The proper ball reflow. That should do it. Maybe a little more, just for good luck, right over there. Now we're going to turn on the quick 861DW hot air rework station. It's available on store.rossmangroup.com. And we're going to reflow that. And it's going to be beautiful. Are you ready, folks? Are you ready to watch this chip get reflowed? By the way, in the next few days, we're going to have HDMI and XLR cords going to the office to the second capture card that I got. So I got another one of these HDMI capture cards from Magewell. It's actually not bad. It's 4 1080p 60 HDMI inputs that can be used at once for like 900 bucks. Pretty good, because it's one of the better deals I found in terms of multiple HDMI capture. I got two of those cards, not one now. I have two of them. So now I can record Paul's setup in the office. And I also got a new camera for that. Paul and Camille and Anel are going to be doing more videos now. And we're just going to let that cool off for a moment. So you're going to be able to see the Paul jobs from the Paul Q. And I'll be able to demonstrate once and for all that there is absolutely no difference between the Paul Q and the Lewis Q. Because you'll be able to see for yourself, once there's video evidence, that there is absolutely no difference between these two cues. Says who? Says the people in the audience. 
Let's see what happens when once this camera system's up. We're going to have evidence. We'll have proof. Like with police, they've got body cams. Here we have board repair cams. You're going to see that his entire day is filled with JTAG connectors and <laughs> LCD connectors. Oh, and I wish. Backlight fuses. Oh, that would be wonderful. CD 3215 reflows. Oh, that would be amazing. It just sits there at 5 volts, taking 20 milliamps. Let's see what the ports on the other side do. The internet here sucks, man. It's time warner. What do you expect? 20 milliamps, same shit. This does not look corroded at all. The only issues we really had were around these two CD3215 ICs. So perhaps a reflow is not going to do it. Perhaps I need to replace both of those CD3215s. You're not sneaking under the chip, little solder ball. Nice try, GTFO. Nice try, little chip. Five volts, 13 volts, 19 volts! Yes! This MacBook has been fixed by replacing the CD3215 that you can get on store.rossmangroup.com The quality of the CD3215s that you'll find on store.rossmangroup.com are far better than the quality of the lighting that you'll see in this video. store.rossmangroup.com In stock. Same day shipping. Free shipping for orders over $30 within the continental United States. Don't delay. Buy effing today. All we had to do on this board was remove the hair. This board had a lot of hair on it. I need to get some blinds for the windows. That shit is killing me. This board had hair on it. We reflowed the chip next to the hairy section. And after we did that, it still didn't work. We replaced that chip with another one. And now it works. A working happy MacBook. A dead CD3215. Made great again. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'm sorry that I have not been doing videos as often as usual. I hope that with the cabling that we're running to the office... Uh, that and uh, with uh, between uh, uh, Anel, Chris, Paul, Tatiana, Camille, that yeah, we have five board repair people that are not me at this point. So hopefully between all of those people, we'll be able to actually get some uh, more board repair videos done. And because I I'm how do I put this? Um, 
after about a thousand of them, I have become less excited about them as I used to be. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some more fun and exciting stuff out there. And hopefully you'll get to be introduced to some more of the other personalities at the store. Uh, like Paul. And we'll finally get to show, once and for all, that Paul does indeed get all the easy boards. It will be sent to this machine, live on camera. You'll be able to see that he's been deceiving you this entire time when he says that all he gets are difficult boards. How can I help you? Is this Rossman? Yes, what can I do for you? I want to congratulate you. You put a little stuff on the internet last night about it. Yelp, you ruined a 23-year-old's life. You got to find it. You know what happens to people that are shitbags like you? Bad karma. Bad karma. Bad karma. God will pay you back, you piece of shit. Call for Christmas is fine. I can...